Hi, I'm Mr. Franklin, and what we're going to do now is we've been we're setting up to where we're actually going to start doing the calculations that Niels Bohr did to figure out where electrons were in the atom. So to do that, though, I need to introduce you to an equation and to and review some of our math processes that we've been working on. So first, let's talk about this equation. C equals frequency times wavelength. C equals nu times lambda. So C is the speed of light, and the speed of light is always 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. Always, always, always. Okay? Frequency measured in hertz is here, and wavelength measured in meters is here. Now, when we introduced our just talked about light, we saw the, the atom was giving us specific lines of light instead of an entire rainbow. And let's say we take the, the first color that we see and we get 450 nanometers for a wavelength. Okay? So we're going to take this measurement, that's what we're going to do in our lab, and we're going to take this, plug it into this equation, and find frequency. So let's look at how we do that. So first we're going to use our process, which is given, unknown, equation, substitute, and solve. We're going to follow that same method. I'm going to go ahead and erase it though so I have room to write some things. Okay, so first, this is my question. If you have a wave light with a wavelength of 450 nanometers, what is its frequency? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write my given. So I start with my givens, G. So what am I given? I'm given the speed of light. It's always that, so I know that's one of my givens. Okay? I'm also given the wavelength is 450 nanometers. What is my unknown? What am I looking for? My unknown is frequency. And if that's confusing here, we can get rid of that. Okay? That was just to separate what I had written earlier. Okay, so given, unknown, and we're going to get into an equation. Okay, and our equation, well, we only have this one right now for light. C equals frequency times wavelength. But like on a bigger test where we've done density, and we're going to do this equation, we're going to have another equation. You're going to have to start, and I'll show you how to do this, but we're going to have to make sure we're picking the correct one. But for now, this is what we're using. Now, before I go plugging any numbers in, the first thing I, you need to do because I've, I've allowed you with density to do the math without the units attached to the number because it makes it easier, right? Well, to do that though, this is nanometers and this is in what? It's in meters. They have to be the same. So we're going to have to convert one of them. And honestly, just for, the, for ease of what we're going to be doing, I'm going to convert this one to meters. So. Here we go. So from our process that we learned earlier, we learned that we can take this and do our King Henry died while drinking chocolate milk, missing no, there's nano, so do, we don't need to, we can stop there, right? And I'm at nano and I'm going to meters. So nano, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine. Nano actually means nine. So we're going to move our decimal nine places. So 450, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Fill in the zeros. Okay? Now, we can leave it like that, but from our practice, if we turn that into scientific notation, it actually means we have to like write less down here as we're working with the number. So I'm going to take this number, 0 .000, 000, 000, 45, 0. You can drop the 0. Okay? I'm going to take this and turn it back into scientific notation. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 4.5 times 10 to the 7. But we started with the decimal here, so that's a negative 7. Okay? 
later on I'm going to show you, well, I can show you, now I will show you the shortcut later on, okay? Right now I want you to practice doing it this way. Okay, so now I'm going to take this, because this is now in meters, Don't. that's why we don't want to forget the units. So I got meters here, and meters here, and now I can plug it in. So, C, 3 times 10 to the getting ahead of myself, 3 times 10 to the 8th. I'm going to put it in parentheses because it's all one number equals frequency, which I don't know, times wavelength, which is 4.5 times 10 to the negative 7. I'm going to put in parentheses. Now, I'm looking for this. So I've done my equation, I just did my substitute, now what? I'm going to solve. So how do I solve for this missing variable? Well, what's next to it? I'm multiplying it times a number, right? So if it's multiplying, i got to do the opposite, which means I'm going to divide by everything that's in parentheses, 4.5 times 10 to the negative 7. But if I do it on this side, I have to do it on this side. Okay. Now, in our calculator, we can do 3 divided by 4.5. Okay, that's what I'm going to tell you to do, is do 3 divided by 4.5, and you should get... Three divided by four point five is equal to point six six seven. It's actually point six six repeating. Okay. Okay. Point six six repeating times ten. Now, your calculator can do this, but there's gonna we're gonna be working with a number that your calculator won't like. So I need you to practice it this way. Well, we're going to use our exponent rules. Okay, our exponent rules that we learned is what are we doing with our exponents? We're dividing, right? So if we're dividing, we're going to subtract the exponent. So I've got 8 minus a negative 7. Be careful, that's a negative. So 8 minus negative 7. Minus a negative is same as plus a positive, right? So this is point. 667 times 10 to the 15th hertz. Why is it hertz? Because it's a frequency. Because that cancels and that cancels and we have a frequency. Okay, now here's the question. Am I done? I'm asking the question so no we're not done. On your test they're going to write that answer in scientific notation. So now i got to fix this. So what do I do? I'm going to move it so that there's one number in front of the decimal. So 6.67 times 10. I moved it one place. So I'm going to have to change this number by one. Was this a decimal or a number bigger than a decimal before I started? It's a decimal which means that this has to become more negative. Okay, Be careful, because sometimes we're going to have a negative number here for other things we're doing. So if it's a decimal, this is going to be more negative. Well, more negative means that's going to drop by 1 to 14. Okay, Because if you add a negative, it's going to drop by 1. Okay, So the correct answer is 6.67 times 10 to the 14th hertz is our frequency. And that's what we would put in the box. Okay? So, here's what I want you to do. I've given you a couple of these that are pretty much exactly like this, and I want you to just try it, but I want you to just do every step just like I did it. Okay? Eventually, I'm going to start changing which number it is and all that kind of stuff, but I want you to just practice the process how do you write all of these numbers down? How do I do the calculator? Okay, before we I start making you really think and apply this. Okay.
All right, so try the, the a couple of problems that I put on here for you. 